So, Senator, now that the session has started, how is it going? Well, it's a little too early to tell, but uh, we spent the interim researching and communicating out to Oregonians through mainstream media and positioning for what we thought was the most important issues that are facing our county. And that, of course, uh, if you want to sort of take them by the order of importance. Uh, let's start with the lowest threshold of pain first. Uh, we basically have been looking very hard at the need for transportation package funding. And that's real for all of us. Every Oregonian needs their transportation needs to be met. Uh, for us in rural Oregon, which is my first concern, it's making sure that we have safe and efficient roadway systems primarily because all of our produce whether it's wheat or cattle or hay or onions and potatoes whatever it happens to be has to be transported usually by truck so market roads you know that may be a phrase not familiar to many people but it's, it's a market road is the thing that connects the producers to a processor or a wholesaler so they can be distributed globally and we're sending hay uh, and wheat and other products all over the Pacific Rim to our best trading partners. And it all starts with a big truck. So market roads are important to us. In the urban areas, of course, uh, my heart goes out to the people that spend an hour or more a day watching taillights. Uh, because a previous Democrat governor said you can't build your way out of congestion. That's, that's just preposterous. <laughs> you, there's only one way to get out of congestion, and that's to increase capacity of our roads. So we believe that uh, transportation package benefits rural and urban equally. Uh, we also think that uh, uh, we can use our transportation investments as a tool to reduce carbon uh, because our Oregonians want us to, and it's a mutually shared goal. So more lanes on Interstate 5 actually have the effect of reducing carbon because a whole bunch of cars idling puts carbon in the air but doesn't produce efficiency of transportation. You gotta get those traffic snarls untangled. Uh, we need uh, uh, I-205 to be improved for as much traffic as there is uh, that we can anticipate for the next 20 years. There's four million Oregonians. And before you know it, there'll be five. And the naysayers say, well, if you build it, they will come. I got news for you. We didn't build it, and they came anyway. So at the end of the day, I think our investments have to be used uh, to reduce carbon, and transportation should be something that we should do first. I mean, well, not first. We should do that easily because everybody wants it. The only stumbling block right now is the low-carbon fuel standard, which siphons money away from gas taxes. And... Uh, puts it into alternative energy like wind and solar and uh, electric vehicles. Electric vehicles aren't really selling very well, and wind and solar sectors are growing 10 times faster than any other sectors in Oregon business. They don't need subsidies. So let's not gouge people at the pump. Let's keep the faith of the Oregonians. Their fuel tax dollars ought to go to fix potholes and roads and build lanes. I, I think we should be able to move forward with that pretty easily. Uh, even though it's a tax break. So the next thing, I mean, probably the most important thing is we have to prioritize education first. We have to get the school funding for K-9 done and get it off the table because we don't want our kids to be held hostage anymore uh, against a huge tax vote. Let's use the available resources for K-12. Then let's prioritize the other things that are needful rank them in order and figure out what it is that we have uh, as resources to put to those needs. And if there's a shortfall that's real, not just a delta between uh, a very high burn rate of income, uh, you know, very high run-up costs for expanded uh, state employees numbers and benefits, and Oregon Project Independence, or uh, services to veterans, or even uh, career technical education, which produces 
higher graduation rates. These are things we ought to be investing in, most Oregonians would say, even if you have to change the tax system to pay for those things. They pay dividends back to Oregonians. So those things should be fairly easy to do. Uh, but let's fund education first and get it off the table. Uh, then I think there's uh, we, we have a, a, a truth-telling problem. We have a, an accountability problem and a transparency problem. And ask, I think, any journalist who's tried to get to the bottom of uh, whispers and rumors when they ask for information from public agencies, they do hit a stone wall of procedure. I mean, Department of Environmental Quality is a classic example. If you have four different people that file Freedom of Information Act forms, uh, depending on what the topic is, they go to four different employees and they disappear in four different directions in the bureaucracy, and they will grind out of that bureaucracy either never, ever, ever, or at four different um, uh, schedules. And, you know, I don't know how you could listen to the governor's speech on transparency and accountability in her state of the state and conclude that she cares about that stuff. Because as the chief executive, she all she has to do is snap her fingers and that line from request to output would straighten out. You know, there'd be one authority and the information would be forthcoming literally on the deadlines for which they're asked. So we think accountability and transparency are huge issues for Oregonians. Beyond that, and the heaviest lift, uh, we have a, a, a spending rate driven by a rapid run-up in state employees. You know, there's, uh, uh, in 2014, there were more than 4,000 new employees for the state. 2015, there was more than 5,000. In 2016, there was more than 6,000 new state workers. Uh, when you hire that many people, you're going to have a problem sustaining those wages and benefits. Uh, when you add 350,000 people uh, using federal transfer money at 1.9 billion, uh, when you add the 350,000 people to Medicaid, you've got big roll-up costs. You've got a problem to sustain that kind of spending. And frankly, it's not in the checkbook. Uh, we have uh, 1.3 billion dollars in new revenue because of our robust economy. Uh, but the burn rate for spending is twice that amount. And so now the uh, governor and the progressives are calling that a shortfall. And it isn't a shortfall if you start with a, a zero-based budget and priorities. We have $1.3 in new revenue. So it's only a shortfall if you intend to maintain the burn rate that looks like a hockey stick on the grass for spending. So as we've said in the past, uh, we Republicans are pointing out that there are ways we can move forward at less cost and better efficiency and get products and services and accountability. Uh, and we've proposed those things to the governor in personal meetings. We've proposed those things to President Peter Courtney in personal meetings. We've signaled our willingness to take up those issues in the press. We've released statements on what to do and how to do those things. We've offered votes on transportation, which involves a tax vote, and we've said that if the Democrats will help us uh, reduce spending, that we will be willing to take up the question of restructuring uh, the revenue side, which means tax votes for both Democrats and Republicans. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we need to focus on. If you want to know what the reactions have been, the governor has formed a brand new task force to oppose President Trump. So in every regime anywhere in the world, when failed politicians and failed policies can't solve problems, they find an external threat to engage or embrace. Uh, I don't care how people feel about Donald Trump. I never endorsed him. You know, it's uh, he's president of the United States, and I believe in the peaceful transfer of power. Uh, but I don't have to look past Oregon to find challenges that we need to unite to solve. And right now, the governor is trying to divert attention from a 
low graduation rate, high taxes, uh, just a, a, a number of problems like the transportation package and PERS uh, gobbling up a third of every dollar that local jurisdictions get from tax revenue. Those things are just too big uh, for Oregonians to allow her to divert attention to the, you know, to the perceived threat of changes in national policy.